In the last video regarding the lore of Dogestar together, I covered the story of Prometheus and Epimetheus, the king and the queen that ruled the ancient civilization which crumbled down like the Berlin Wall when the king played with the forces so shady that it corrupted his subjects and his lady. I ended the video hinting that the evil shadow forces, after wrecking havoc on this Crustacean city, sought out a possible stooge that could shoo the king away from where he is seated. Now, that video was made back in 2019, and since then we've been showered with so much more in terms of the lore. I closely examined those different details and different tales and revised the videos where I surmised what they drew to describe only to realize 1. I am phenomenally lazy when making a part 2 of anything. 2. My first video has a few sections subject to correction. I still stand by my interpretation of the murals, but the comment from Lucky Lugia pointed out that the name of the king and the queen should be Matthias and Cyclone, given that Matthias puzzle gives you the cane and the Cyclone puzzle gives you the torch. It made sense to me, so those will be the names I shall be using to refer them from now on. Second correction I wish to make is how I introduced Maxwell as a candidate the Shadow Forces lured in to drive away Matthias. Instead, I wish to divulge a theory that has been boiling in my mind for quite some time, for like a month and a half. What if Maxwell is Matthias and Charlie is Cyclone? What if the king and the queen in the murals are none other than those two stage performers that disappeared while performing their final act? Of course, given the timeline, that may sound ridiculous. I mean, the whole story, as Clay officially mentioned, takes place in around 1920-ish. For Maxwell to be Matthias, after being dragged into the constant in 1906, he had just a little more than a decade to raise a civilization, then drop it into this abysmal hellhole. That way, Wilson and the other survivors would discover it as the ancient ruins after they arrived. Even then, they wouldn't exactly describe anything they find there as ancient if the whole thing was just made, built, then trashed just a few years ago. It's not like we call the Chernobyl the ancient ruins and that meltdown happened in more like 30 years ago. But what if the time flow is vastly different in the constant? For me, that suspicion was confirmed thanks to none other than our most recently introduced survivor, Wanda the Timekeeper. From the character trailer made by Clay, we know that Wanda entered the constant in a less conventional method compared to other human survivors, as she was not kidnapped by the Shadow Hands, but literally sucked into the realm after breaking the fabric of time and space. That would explain why, unlike any other survivors, her body is affected by the time flow in the constant that appears to be incredibly faster. How fast, you ask? Well, exactly 4,380 times faster because a single day in the constant is 12 years for Wanda's biological clock. In that case, in the constant's timeline, Maxwell and Charlie showed up at least 43,800 years earlier than all the other survivors, and that is ancient. For those who cannot fathom the concept of 40,000 years, here's some prehistory lesson from a random gaming YouTuber, totally qualified after reading a Wikipedia page. 40,000 years ago, our ancestors were going through what we now call the Upper Paleolithic Age, more simply, the Late Stone Age. Twas the time when Homo sapiens showed more behavioral modernity, using refined stone tools to stay more classy and leaving behind more artistic legacy. Wonder who else was this savvy? Well, the lobster folks you see in the murals, though it appears they were slightly better off than our ancestors were at the time with all the farming, the mining, and the beekeeping. Now. Imagine what would happen when this surprisingly sophisticated prehistoric tribe meets two individuals with the knowledge of early 20th century and the power to manipulate shadow. You know, just one of the core essences of the constant. If I were to guess, long as those two don't get hunted and killed in the first five minutes for either witchcraft or having only four limbs, they'll become gods. But James, Maxwell and Charlie don't exactly look lobstery. True, but then again, it is also interesting to point out that from the single player version of the game and from the statues you see here and there, Maxwell's body proportion is evidently different compared to any other human survivors. It is only after he is freed from the Nightmare Throne and unlocked as a playable character, his appearance resembles others. This could mean that during his time as Matthias, Maxwell may have indeed assumed a form much different than what we have seen so far. This could explain why some of the constant entities have trouble recognizing Maxwell, unlike how they are supposed to according to the man. 
But James, even if he's tall and gorgeous, he still looks much closer to a human than a shrimp. Is that so? Well, have another look. This is how Maxwell appears for the final level of Don't Starve Adventure Mode. Long crooked torso, disfigured limbs, oh how they resemble his majesty and his scoliosis. Perhaps the same can be said for Charlie as well, as her anatomical feature also differs from that of Wilson when the two meet in the new Rain video made by Clay. This, however, I'm a bit hesitant to use as an evidence, as it could simply be because of the style of those who worked on the animation, not necessarily because of the lore. If Maxwell is indeed the fallen foolish king himself, his words will then make so much more sense. He already has an in-depth knowledge of various entities in the constant, quite familiar with many of them and even possibly responsible for creating some himself. The same kind of power Matthias seemed to have wielded himself based on the murals. Furthermore, it has been said from the Rhymes With Play livestream by Clay that no one has ever sat on the Nightmare Throne before Maxwell, which can only make sense if the king on the throne depicted in the mural is the Shadow Master himself who waited there for years, so many that he lost counts until someone came along to free him from his tortured state. And that is the end of this video. The question still remains regarding for what purpose did Maxwell kidnap different survivors. Although I have my own theory regarding that as well, it's really more of a guess at the moment, as I am yet to see the origin story for all the other survivors, and I think I already threw too many wild guesses that could humiliate me to bones if I ever happen to be wrong. I would like to thank my supporters like Sorin and Quincy, and would like you to like, share, and subscribe if you could, and give kisses to your loved ones. And with that being said, Cheers.